So, here's my second video on compositing. This one we use um, a live, we use video for the background feed. Um, I originally said I was going to use the sequence where I have a jet fly in. Um, I'm not going to entirely use that mostly because I lost my raw footage of without the jet. Um, I'll still explain a couple things in it though. Um, the second reason is, is that I found out mostly that this video sequence right here that I uploaded a while ago shows a bit more info on compositing with actual, um, with some video. Um, first thing I like to show is this right here. Okay. So I have it where I'm pretending to fight. Okay, so you'll notice I have a sphere. I downloaded this sphere from somewhere. I can't remember where. I think it was like Star Wars Blender or something weird like that. I'll attempt to find the link and post it in the um, video info if I do find it or if maybe someone else finds it and comments it, then I'll put it there too. So I've parented it to just an empty and I've animated the empty. The animation for the empty is based upon the original video. Um, to make your video, to make your motion with the video easy, I would highly recommend you go and you hit view background image, and then you can hit load or whatever. Go find your video. Make sure AVI is helpful. Make sure it doesn't have any compression or anything like that, and then Blender can read it just fine, and then use it. Once you do, make sure it should say movie right here. Should be a little movie button that is pressed. And then hit auto refresh. There's a button that says auto refresh right here. Press that button and it should as soon as you change any frames, it'll move along. The video will scroll. Okay. Then what you can do is then you can obviously animate your little object to match up with your video because as soon as you hit zero and go to your camera view then you can see how it works okay another thing is this is one of those planes that are invisible on render they you just want to change the alpha to zero but do not enable z transparency or ray transparency if you enable that then you'll see the object behind it but if you don't turn it on then what will happen is um, during your render, it will go to an alpha for the video. Video render is alpha. So what you want to do is, if you open up the video sequence editor, now you want to add the scene. So the scene that you're currently in, you want to add it and drag it right to the beginning, to frame one, I believe. Yeah, to frame one. And then what you can do is you go add movie. Go and find your movie. There we go. And timed it up with with the animation. And then once you have your two things in there, make sure you select both of them, and you go add effect. And it's either going to be alpha over or alpha under or it's one of those. Keep trying until you're going to have to render a couple times until it actually works. Make sure though that you've got right here in in your render settings, you've got do sequence, which will enable the sequence output rendering, which is your sequence editor right here. So if I hit F12 to test it, wait a second, looks like we're good because we've got the object and we've got the rest of my video in there. So we should be good and you can go ahead and render it and yeah. So I've matched up my video, so it fits, and then when it goes behind this object, it'll actually disappear. See if you go F12, it's disappeared behind the pillar, as you saw in the original video. Um, as for the lightsaber effects, I think I used a program called LS Maker. I don't have it, or I don't think I saved the project for that originally either so that I could have used it from the other video that I've made that has this but with lightsaber effects but without the object going behind the pillar. Um, in this video, I actually haven't posted this on YouTube because I never rendered it, but it goes behind my head. The reason I never finished it is because 
again, I could take one of these objects that masks out and I could mask along the edge of my head. I could use shape keys additionally to make it follow the shape of my head as I move and turn and whatnot and also as it goes behind the lightsaber. Uh, you should probably learn shape keys on your own if you want to figure that out. A couple of other things. If you notice, I've got the camera lined up in a fairly good spot where it made sense um, so that the camera, the virtual camera matched up with the real camera that I filmed with. Um, and that's what I want to show you on this one where the jet flies in. So I don't have the original video footage, but I also matched it up along with when I originally made this so that it flew in over the top of the car. But um, as for matching up the virtual camera with the real camera, um, what I did is originally in the video, as you can see, I filmed that video. And then what I did is I actually went outside where I filmed this, took a tape measure, and measured across the road. So that way I knew how big it was in the real world. I then went into Blender and made the width across the road right there, right in between those two lines, the exact same width. I basically modeled the road and I modeled the hill too. So I modeled the actual real world. Then what I did is, in the view, because I obviously had the video lined up right here with the camera, I moved the camera around until the video so that these two lines right here matched up with these two lines right here. That way the camera corresponded and it was obviously flat. That way I didn't have to go maneuvering a camera around funny. Um, and it basically allowed for a view that would make sense on the model and on the shading. So the shadows matched up. That's why there's even, you can see it looks like it goes up a little hill because I've modeled the road to have a small dip in it. Truthfully, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. As you can see, I've got all this masking stuff again that also receive the shadows so that when you play... Here. Uh, I found it. Okay. So this is... Some... Okay, so there we go. Okay, if you look, I've got a shadow here. How I get the shadow is with this material right here. This material is slightly different from the masking material. It still masks, but if you'll notice down here, I've got shadow, transparent shadow, so it receives transparent shadows, but it can also, re it's also got the button only shadow set under the shaders menu. Um, this allows it to receive by the description, render shadows on material as alpha value. So it will basically only render the shadows on it. it. Otherwise, it'll appear completely transparent. That is how, in the video, you can still see the stuff through the shadow. It is still, though, obviously shaded, shaded or, yeah, shadowed, whatever. So make sure if you want to do that, you've got transparent shadow. Now again, it won't look this nice if you've only got one lamp. Lamp, lamp, lamp. Okay, I've got three lamps right there. Um, and they all have various different settings. This one only casts a ray shadow, only at 0.5. This one casts it casts negative light, so it only casts so it subtracts from light. I don't know why I did that for certain. And this one only casts shadows. Or, yeah, so only the shadows are rendered with this one. Um, and then I've also got ambient occlusion turned on in here, 16, with an energy of 2. Um, it allowed me, because for some reason, if the surfaces have the only shadows button on, you can't really see a lot of ambient occlusion. It doesn't render correctly or something weird. So I had to do that in order to make it look nice. You have to tweak around with your light settings until your shadows look good. Um, so, yeah, that's how you can do compositing with actual video footage.